Hey everyone, I wanted to talk about uh, the power of blue, which really is just the atmosphere. So if we take into account this area back here, and let's go putting it into there, <clears throat> you can see how that blue will automatically give us distance. I should mention actually this is a, an Arthur Streeton painting, probably one of the great painters of atmosphere, depth, and that's what we're always trying to achieve in our paintings. This is really a, um, a quite an um, easy scene to sort of see the depth. Actually, if, you, if we were to actually take into account where that value is, which is way back here, the way that I like to sort of think is, is if we're marching forward in a scale right back to the sky so as each dot they'll get more the blue will get darker it'll actually become a warmer blue and then eventually more of a purpley blue say over here this is not a lot of purple in it but that's the general idea e eventually getting more red and then ultimately becoming more yellow and that's why we see far more yellow in our foregrounds because it's the first color to actually disappear on our way back you can see how pale that that value is so i'll just sneak up into another one and this really doesn't have a lot of variety in color it's mostly just blue with a little bit of yellow and red but you can see what streeton's done with this painting he's actually used the power of blue to not only get depth and distance, but also to actually create a colour harmony and, um, and to make it aesthetically pleasing as well. Ultimately, we're trying to reproduce a painting that uh, will give us depth and distance. So we'll have a look at how cool and how cool of a blue that is. And this will be the little darker one. Uh, and or actually let's even go for that shadow as well. Actually, let's put a bit of it over this side. So you can see those three blues. And they actually look quite strong in the context of where they're positioned. But when we bring them into a foreground or mid distance, we can really see that the dramatic distance and, and, and difference in value. <clears throat> uh, the thing that really liked with this one is you can actually see where Streeton actually used, brought the blue right through even it's got a little bit of blue through there. Actually in this distance, he's even got a little bit of red into that blue that will actually make it stand out a little further than the very background uh, mountain. This almost looks like it's overlooking Melbourne uh, from either the Dandenongs, which is one of the mountain ranges. But it's that ability to create depth through the color blue or through our total color scheme really because we're using yellow and reds to play off the blues so there's a would be a real um, temptation to paint those really dark super dark but then the trouble is if Streeton did that if you put oops wrong one if you put that really dark there it's only going to compete with these ah, it's a bit awkward so imagine that's possibly the tonal contrast that was there but you can see how if we don't um, uh, develop a way to create depth through the atmosphere color we're sort of leaving our painting short that's why if we get too much yellow and uh, reds and greens into our backgrounds uh, too soon we limit the ability to, to create depth. So I'll just jump into a couple of um, reference photos so you can really see. This is actually a scene that Streeton actually has painted and I've done a little version a few years ago myself just for fun. I actually didn't exhibit the painting but it was more just for my sort of painting enjoyment. So you can see these values <clears throat> as I mentioned with those red dots you can see how it really is a, um, a stepping back from blue and you think that almost is the sky value but it's not I'll just grab 
that sky value just to push it even one more. <coughs> Excuse me. Let's go even one more and then one more. And, and you can see actually how the blue is actually editing itself out. That is that final one. But we can see it up against it. And it does have actually have a touch of red. And there's even a little bit of um, reflected light in that one, but it's not going to really show too well. Let's just have another go at that. Yeah, you can see actually the red coming through that. That's red orange. But you wouldn't use too much of that red orange back in there. You can actually see how much atmosphere is in there, how much atmosphere is in there. So it truly is just placing one shape up in front of another. And this was just a quick little demo. Let's have a look at that value. So that's why it is actually a good trick to actually turn your your reference image, or even when you're at the scene, turn your head upside down, even so long as you don't fall over, of course. But our eyes see tree, 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 or building, or um, even let's even come into this little rocky and scarpa, which we know is actually quite orange. But there's still quite a bit of blue into that to make it that grey red. Uh, let's even have a look. There's a nice little bit of there, so it's not pure colour. I can see the amount of blue in that one there. And let's go for the final real sort of, you can see the depth there. So even though that, to my eyes and to most people's eyes, this will represent, it's actually quite a dark green and we don't want a bit of dark green here, but I would be going more of a, a dark purpley green. So bringing more, a little bit more red into it so it doesn't go cold, the shadow. Because a lot of times we lose our painting in the shadows, not so much in the lights. I find if I get depth and distance in my shadows, I know I'm almost going to guarantee that I'll get depth and distance in my paintings. This is um, one of my favourite sort of painting cities or regions in Victoria in Australia, which is about 18 hours drive south of where I live. But I do quite a bit of teaching in this area. And you can, and this is one of the areas that we go plain air painting. And you can see from right at the back how grey that really is. So that's why when we play that distant grey, and we can even exaggerate it even more, putting more sky into th that mix to make it even uh, bluer and greyer. We don't have to... Uh, actually, my point is not to truly mimic what's there. It's the translation into a piece of art. That's what I'm really trying to aim at. So... Um, a lot of people do know this, but it's a great little reminder as well. So we'll see you next month. Bye for now, guys. When it comes to art, there is no single right or wrong answer. However, there are still a lot of concepts and techniques that students need to learn to create a strong, visual language. This course is designed to help you develop and find your own visual language so that you can start expressing yourself more confidently because over the years I've studied and noted the areas where students tend to struggle the most and then I've delved deeply into these topics. So we will cover the basics of colour, edge, how to achieve a strong contrast from light to dark, focal points, and creating depth so that you can start to use it effectively in your work. I'll demonstrate a wide range of subjects which I believe will broaden your horizons and allow you to gain experiences that you may have only dreamed of trying. By the end of this course, you'll have a better understanding of how to express your own visual language and create artwork that is both successful and expressive. I invite you to join me for an exciting year of learning and exploration.